folks, I want to share with you about kindness, because I really believe that being kind is kind of like the glue that holds love together and so much more in one's life. So here are some of my favorite quotes that I gathered from the Brainy Quotes website. Carry out a random act of kindness with no expectation of reward, safe in the knowledge that one day someone might do the same for you. That by Princess Diana. Audrey Hepburn says, for beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, speak only words of kindness. And for poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never alone. Mark Twain says, kindness is the language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. The Dalai Lama says, my religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. William Arthur Ward says, a warm smile is the universal language of kindness. And Lao Tzu says, kindness Kindness in words creates confidence. Kindness in thinking creates profoundness. Kindness in giving creates love. And today's show is all about love, connected to open heart surgery and soul surgery. Open up your heart to love, joy, and happiness. That is our definition of open heart surgery. And soul surgery is the art and science of discerning the soul's message, expressions, and ideas ideal path. Before I bring on our esteemed guest, Dr. Dawn Strangers, let me go to you, Dr. Dawn, and what's your take on kindness and love? Joyce, I think you've done a beautiful job of assembling these quotes from the greatest thinkers around the globe and in all eras, and I would say that it really is the staff of life. Unfortunately, we forget about that sometimes. So we are fortunate to have you reminding us and your friends also. (laughs) And thank you so much for that. And you are the epitome of love and healing and kindness. Just one more from Ralph Waldo Emerson that will put it all together, and that is you cannot do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. So, folks, we're going to perform some open-heart surgery today, love, health, joy, happiness. We want to give you a share of that, and hopefully all of us will do whatever we can in whatever way we can to make the world a better place, one positive action and one person at a time. Who is Dr. Dawn Strangers? She has a resume, a bio that I could spend the whole show just talking about her credentials. Uh, just to name a few, Akame University, PhD with high honors, transcultural studies, energy medicine with a 4.1 average. A 4.1 average is better than an A. It's like an A plus average. So that tells us that our special guest today is not only one with a beautiful heart and soul, but is a genius as well. Greenwich University, Master of Science, Consciousness and Bioelectric Healing Therapies, 4.0 average. Cornell University is a Bachelor of Science, Human Ecology, with concentration in design and psychology. And some of her skills include meditation and imagery instructor and consultant, expressive arts program developer and instructor, trained in numerous healing modalities such as therapeutic touch, Reiki master, teacher, shamanism, Eastern models of healing, Tai Chai Cha, I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but folks, you kind of get the idea. So without further ado, I bring to you someone I am very proud to call my friend, Dr. Dawn Strangers. Go ahead, Dawn. Well, thank you so much, Joyce. And um, I would like everybody in the listening audience to just take a moment, and I want you to maybe even just close your eyes. We have a beautiful opportunity here that is very rare, which is you've dedicated some time right now to listen to something positive in life, and that in itself is a rarity. But let's just carry it a little further for just a moment and luxuriate in the choice that you've already made for positivity. And then 
we're just going to uh, take a quiet moment and just feel that what's real and surrounding us is love. And unfortunately, we don't uh, focus on that as much as we might. So this is an opportunity to become aware of that. Just feel it around you. Just feel we're never alone, like that quote said. And from this place of feeling the lovingness that is there, and that is the reality, we can take that into our heart and expand that so that we might insist upon this more time during the day and return to this moment where we're empowering with loving kindness. So I want you to take that with you as as one of the gifts today that you can give yourself again and again. And when you give that to yourself more and more frequently, the people around you get a gift too because you're more peaceful and more loving. And we all need that more, don't we, Joyce? We all need that more. And some people need it a lot more than others. Yes, indeed they do. And really, um, when we think about some of the behaviors that we might look at and say, how can people be that cruel or mean or, you know, fearful or negative, probably if you got down to the bottom of it, you'd find that really it's uh, an expression of a deficiency of love and kindness in their perception at least. They might have had trauma or something like that, but sort of like uh, the at the kernel of all of our complaints and problems is this soul's need for love and kindness. When I was in Thailand uh, learning meditation at a temple, it was a beautiful experience, um, the monks taught us Uh, their own Thai form of meditation to, there were five Americans that were invited. They taught us um, how to instruct the Westerners how to meditate in that form. One of the um, versions of their meditation that was a little more advanced was one on loving kindness because it's a, it's a very um, strong feature in their culture and in their thinking and in this meditation. And I found it to be very delightful, and um, it's something I'd like us all to think about a bit more. Um, and your, your quotes highlighted it so beautifully. Why not be kind? Just It really doesn't take anything. It adds something to our lives and to the lives of others. Absolutely. And um, it it only takes a little, uh, something as simple as a smile uh, to just show you care about someone. Just that very act of smiling makes a difference. Oh, huge, huge difference, especially to somebody that's really hurting or feeling lonely. Um, just even if they're a stranger, that smile could turn their whole day around and might get them thinking, and it could be the source of turning their whole life around. We get caught up in the illusion, you know, that we're alone or, you know, that that life is painful. It really is an illusion because we, we lost contact with that positivity and the the kindliness that's out there and the love that is there at any moment, but we have to detach from the illusion first, you know. Uh, Regarding kindness, uh, I want to say also that no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. So, like I said, even starting with just that warm smile, uh, that asking someone, how are they doing, just saying, is there any way I can assist you with anything, it really does make a difference. Absolutely. Um, it, it's really amazing and profound at times, too. 
And, you know, sometimes you might find out years later just a, a, a random act of kindness that, that you extended. Um, they may remember that for years, and that may change the way they look at things and improve their lives. And that power is within each person. So think about the power that you have in this world where we might, you know, bend to the illusion that, that we we don't have much power. But in actuality, we have power at every moment. And, you know, that's one of the things I love about your message and your program, Joyce, is that it's a reminder every time somebody listens that that power is there and it reminds us back to that reality. There's so many things that are drawing our attention into the illusion of disempowerment or sadness or any of the negative emotions that, um, you know, we, what we need most are reminders to get back to what's real, which is it's all about the law. When people get to the end of their lives and they start to review they're concentrating on if only I had, and it has to do with being more loving or kind in almost all um, cases. They've done, you know, surveys and research on that. So it's um, a nice reminder today. Let's not wait that long. Let's do, as Joyce had indicated earlier, let's, let's, perpetuate some of those random acts of kindness and see where that might take us. John Wellesley really sums it all up. Do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. We can never err on too much kindness. Right. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I saw um, when I was in Thailand, um, and even out in public, um, and this is something that that I hadn't seen ever before. Um, People do these random acts of kindness, um, and they say it's to make merit as far as their souls go. They're attempting to um, just be as loving and kind as possible. So you would see, you know, outside of the temples and homes in Southeast Asia, you take your shoes off and leave them um, outside the door. And you would see people coming and they would arrange the sets of shoes in a nice orderly row um, and that was considered one of these um, acts of kindness to to make merit. Um, it's it's a, a lovely way of thinking, um, not that we need to do that for a specific reason, but just because it's the right thing to do. We could be a little more kind and loving. And our life would be um, benefiting from that. And then we can spread it from there. So I, I see you doing that. Uh, frequently, Joyce, and I'd like to thank you for for practicing what you preach there. And thank you. And it takes one to know one. I mean, you're such a kind-hearted, good soul. Uh, you're so loving and so healing. So that's why you recognize it in others, because you have that in yourself. So why don't we move along to heart and soul, and let's start with open heart surgery. Uh, Mm -hmm. Open up your heart to love, joy, and happiness, our definition of open heart surgery. It is. And one of the beautiful things, Joyce, is um, something that you and I are so profoundly connected with, um, this loving aspect of the heart. Um, We are now able to see in research that, indeed, a loving heart has positive effects on the physical heart. Um, it's, it's fascinating. Um, you know, it wasn't all that long ago that when people had heart disease, um, the expectation was 
um, well, you know, you're going to have to stop doing all your physical activity. Um, you have to stay um, peaceful, don't get angry. And um, if there will, is anything, like if you have angina or pain, there's a little nitro pill that you could take. Um, and that, uh, you know, years ago really devastated people with heart disease. Until, um, I think maybe about 30 years ago, Dr. Dean Ornish proved that heart disease could actually be reversed, and he put people on these very strong, you know, like a, a vegetarian diet with little or no fat, an hour of yoga a day, an hour of meditation a day, which, let's face it, most Americans would find that very difficult to maintain. Um as he matured in his career, he started to notice that the people that were healing the best were people that had a support system that reached out and that were loving. So then he started doing research about that. Um, and he's got a book out that I really love called Love and Survival. He's known as the, you know, the the frontier researcher in heart disease. And um, one of the things he says about the healing power of love and intimacy is, I am not aware of any other factor in medicine, not diet, not smoking, not exercise, not stress, not genetics, not drugs, not surgery, that has a greater impact on our quality of life, incidence of illness, and premature death from all causes. So there's your your greatest medicine, love and kindness. I so agree with you. And that's your middle name, love and kindness. <laughs> so <laughs> please continue. <laughs> well, um, what I've been doing uh, lately in studying and working with my clients is um, focusing on the soul. Now, uh, this has been a long journey to kind of, you know, develop this idea and get a a cohesiveness as to this approach, which is part of energy medicine, um, the area that my degree is in and my interest. But it really all boils down to the soul. When we feel stress, that's a message from the soul. We're not on track here for the ideal soul's path. So if we look at these things, we can sometimes learn, okay, so what do I need to do to remedy this? And it's really about connecting with the soul. Um, You know, even the National Institutes of Health, which is supposed to be our greatest authority on research, and accumulating knowledge and then a place you can go to find out what's going on in the world of medicine. On the NIH National Institutes of Health, um, in their literature, you can find it online, they say that 97% of our ailments spring from stress. That's pretty powerful, coming from a conventional medical authority. But here's the $64 million question. (laughs) What are we doing about that? So I I thought this is a quite underserved basic reality that I'd like to address. And in doing so with my clients, they're feeling happier and healthier, and they're achieving things that they couldn't previously achieve. So I'm inviting everybody to um, think about their soul and how we might be able to extend some kindness to that soul today. Great idea, because it sounds like we got to start from giving it to ourselves. That is where it starts. And so today I thought maybe uh, maybe we could uh, give a treat to everybody's 
soul, everybody who's listening. And uh, maybe we can clear away some of the the obstacles in our soul's path. And uh, I think one of the things we can start, I'd like everybody to to think about, is we need to get in touch with some of the messages that we've seen but likely haven't thought to acknowledge in our lives. And what I'm talking about is what has touched your soul? And that might seem like, well, I don't know what that means at first. But here's a way that we can come to recognize it. Um, and we're not used to usually thinking about our soul as one of our priorities, but I do believe that it it really is our biggest priority. Um, if you think back in your life, there may be a, a few and maybe a precious few books that you have read that touched your heart and touched your soul. There might be a precious few movies that you have watched that have touched your heart and touched your soul. Uh, There may be some memories that we've encountered experiences when you thought, oh, that gives me goosebumps. And that really, when we get goosebumps, we get deeply touched, maybe tears come to our eyes. That is the physical expression of the nervous system conducting a message from our soul. So if we think about these things, now, there are a few movies that, uh, and, you know, books as well, that seem to have a universal appeal, like The Wizard of Oz, for instance. Um, And uh, It's a Wonderful Life that I think touched the souls of a lot of people. And Um, The movie, It's a Wonderful Life, it's about a man who expresses his form of business and living as doing kindness for people in the community. And then he, you know, tragedy befalls him. And as it turns out, the whole community remembers his kindnesses and assembles en masse to deliver little bits of kindness that come together as a huge expression of kindness. And I think that that's one of the things that touches our hearts and souls in in that movie is this element of the kindness that you were referring to when we first started talking. So I'm thinking, I'm inviting everybody to um, just take a moment and think about the those books the movies, the situations that have touched our hearts and souls. And maybe even just jot them down, because I, I would like you to further investigate what is it about that book or that movie that actually is, your soul is sending you a message there to take a closer look at that, and that that needs somehow to come into your life. It's it's very interesting. And when you're talking to people about this, like I'm encouraging people in the audience to talk with their friends, loved ones, or acquaintances about this topic. What is it that touches your soul? And when people's souls are touched, their whole physiology changes. You can see it on their face. They they may get this beaming look, or you know they're they're very they become very focused, and well, it, it's a fascinating thing to see. I'm sure you've observed that, Joyce. 
Absolutely. But when you're talking about what touches your heart and soul, I want to refer two very recent shows to our listening audience. All our shows are archived. So the first one is in the archives, January 21. That was this past Wednesday. The songs of Ariana. They were all original, inspirational, and motivational songs. Ariana has the voice of an angel. and Whenever I hear her music, it just goes right through me. And I, I said that throughout the program. It went to my heart and my soul. So every one of those songs were original, beautifully done, truly the voice of an angel. And Ariana is also known as Dr. Denise Nadler. She's a chiropractor, the daughter of our health guru, Beverly Nadler. But her music is so extraordinary, so beautiful that it truly reaches me. And one other show, same week, the day before January 20th, uh, being humble, be that as it may, I do want to invite you to listen to my show with all my original inspirational poetry. So I did this as a half hour show, so it could be all about the poems, one after the other. And that is something also that I would recommend to all of you because the poems are inspirational and very, very powerful. Uh, even <laughs> I'm, I'm giving accolades to the one who wrote it namely me. So those two shows will do that. And uh, I, I always look for the kind of movies that will really reach me. Uh, the ones that I have on my list are always musicals because the musicals are upbeat and make me feel good. And this past weekend I went to see Annie and it's a completely different version of Annie. All the songs are the same and really very well done and totally captured the way we know them. But the movie storyline is completely different and I loved it and it reached me, totally reached me because I like these feel good things, especially with the underdog prevails. So those are just some of my personal favorites. Oh, that's so wonderful to share. I'm glad you did, Joyce. Um, and it highlights uh, you're, you're automatically doing what I think is a good idea for all of us to follow in your footsteps. And that is um, if we think about the soul, the soul has uh, its own needs. You know, we need to eat. We need to eat and drink. And, and a lot of energy and time and money is put towards what's the best thing to eat and drink and our diets, and we have different diets to accomplish different things. Um, but what about our soul? How about a happy diet for our soul? Our souls in order to grow and mature and to fulfill the mission we came here to fulfill, they actually require positivity. And so when you say, I like to feel good movies, such as Annie, and so where the underdog you know, gets their day in the sun and things have an uplifting and inspirational um, tenor and ending to them, um, we actually all need that. And if you look at what's surrounding us on our media, I don't think we agree that that, I, I don't think we would say that that is a positive influence in, in the majority of what's on there. So I'm, uh, I'm requesting that our listeners think about the diet that the soul needs for us to be happy and to start to switch up our diet to things that are positive, inspirational, and motivational. So maybe we need to read more of these books and see more of these movies and even TV shows or um, uh, if we're writers, start writing more along those lines, such as your poetry. And I know um, Beverly's poetry is inspirational as well. So, Her poetry yeah. is extraordinary. I had the really image is. just now of how we all love to get our bodies massaged. I know I'm really big on touch. Uh, kinest I'm very kinesthetic. 
And um, so we all know about getting our bodies massaged. But as I'm listening to you, Dawn, I realized how important it is to get our hearts massaged, our soul massaged, that that's extremely important as well. Oh, a wonderful point, Joyce. Very wonderful. And it's one that we, generally speaking, don't think about. But we need to start thinking about that. Because at the end of our life, as our physical capabilities kind of come down a little, you know, as we age, that's when our souls can come into shine. And they can grow stronger more powerful as time goes on. It takes some maturity for most people to get that soul exercised, strong, vibrant, and helping a lot of people. I really believe that each of us came with this tremendous and extremely powerful and unique gift that you know, our soul holds in, in order to develop that we might do for our work, which seems like play, something that is helping not only us, but a lot of other people as well. Um, I see that you do that in your life, Joyce, with your radio show and, and your coaching and just who you are. And I think each of us has that capability. So I'm dedicated to helping people Unlock that, free it up, exercise it, feed it beautifully. And so today, um, we can, if we haven't thought, those of us that haven't thought about it before, let's think about how do we feed that soul and exercise it. Um, feeding it with wonderful music, dance, um, writing. These are the things that bring out our gifts. And, um, massaging it with these things that make it feel so good and balance us. It's a beautiful thing to do, and so much in our life is drawing us away from the real stuff of life, which is our soul, that, you know, we, we get tied up with all the the errands we have to accomplish and, you know, the emails to answer and all those duties that we have. That, and we have all these labor-saving devices, but if you think about back in the old times when people didn't have the labor-saving devices, <laughs> you know, there was this time of menial labor that we all engaged in that that connected us with ourselves more, a quiet time, reflection. As you can go on automatic pilot when you're, um, you know, slamming your clothes against the rocks or something. Um, and doing these things that are, are quite menial or, or gathering or waiting while you're hunting um, to get connected with the soul and what's real and what, what you notice about in the quiet times of life. So that's how some of the ways we can feed our souls. And I want to say that the best thing I know to massage your mind, body, spirit, your soul is to listen to this show every day. Those of you that can't join us at 11 Eastern when we are live, uh, you can hear it 24-7 in our archives. And in the wise, wise words of Beverly Nadler, our health guru, also uh, the lady who introduced me to Timothy Schaub and Dawn Strangers as well. In her wise words, here's why you should listen every day. Listen to me. I have something to say about a wonderful way to start your day. A way to stimulate your mind and increase your energy. Make you feel so good. And guess what? It's free. Weekdays at 11 a.m. Eastern, hear the Joyce, Barry, and Friends Mm -hmm. show. You'll find it on the Internet on Blog Talk Radio. This show is upbeat and fun and very inspirational. It's informative, educational, and very motivational. There's the Coach's Corner, great quotes and news. There are suggestions, perspectives, and advice you can use to enhance your life and improve your health, plus clever, simple ways to increase your wealth. 
Joyce's perceptions and personality will keep you captivated, and her guests from many walks of life will always keep you fascinated. When Joyce and her friends speak, it's like you're in the conversation. This is part of what makes her show so unique, really a sensation. For Joyce's friends are not only the guests you're listening to, they're everyone who is tuning in. Yes, I do mean you. So refer your friends and family. They'll be so pleased to know. And let's make Joyce, Barry, and Friends the number one internet radio show. <laughs> and folks, you can partner up with us and be, for us to become number one all the way. Simply go to Joyce Barry B A R R I E and Friends dot com, and right on the upper left under my picture, you can click follow, and that will make you a follower of the show, which means that you will get notification every day on our show, our guest, our topic. So you need not miss any of them because, as I said, all shows are archived. Uh, back to you, Dr. Dawn. But before you continue on this beautiful topic, share with people your website and how they can reach you. Okay. Uh, my website is mysoulsurgeon.com. And uh, I also conduct uh, consultations by phone. So you don't have to live nearby and come see me, although I welcome those that, that do. My phone number is 585-465-1460. And I can say firsthand that I know she's a really beautiful healer. Uh, she's very enlightened. She's very spiritual. I would highly recommend her. I would recommend the chiropractic services of Dr. Timothy Schaub, her partner. Uh, so I strongly invite you to... Check out the two of these extremely great healers, extremely wonderful people. Back to you, Dr. Dawn. Well, thank you so much, Joyce. Um, I have something to add at this point, too, which is um, one of the things that I highly recommend, which I think is good for everybody, but we don't all have the skills to do it, um, is meditation. It quiets the mind, the body, the emotions, and the soul and allows us to tune into what's real and what is usually obscured by our usual activities. Um, along those lines, uh, specifically for the soul, I would recommend that the listeners tune in sort of as a guided meditation to this show as often as possible, daily would be great, because it's like I was saying earlier, our souls really need to be fed. And this show does a beautiful job of feeding our souls. And there's such a diversity of topics covered that I would dare say that anybody's soul could be fed. Um, you know, if if you listen more than once, listen and see what's there. There's These are um, profound subjects that we really need to support because there's so few of these really tasty meals for our soul that when when they're there, we need to support them. So please, by all means, um, be thinking of Joyce Berry's radio shows when you're thinking about how can I feed my soul. Okay, Joyce. Thank you so much for that. I want to go to our studio lines for a moment. You are not in the host uh, queue, but I just want to see, perchance, if you'd like to say hi and tell us your name and where are you calling from. And that would be 901406. Again, I just put you in the host queue if you'd like to just say hi and tell us who you are and where you're calling from. 901406. Hello. Oh, yes. Who Who's on the line? 
Hi, this is Lanise, and I'm calling from Memphis, Tennessee. Lanise, Hi. L-E-N-I-S-E. L-E-N-E-S-E. Yeah, beautiful name. And what brought you to the show today, Lanise? Well, I was just looking for some spiritual uplifting, and I called your show. I read the topic. I don't know what you call it, but I recently lost a friend. Well, I didn't lose a friend. He transitioned. He passed, and he's like in my head, and I can't stop thinking about him, and I'm tearing and, you know, kind of getting a afraid and just going through something. Well, Anise, oh, me, I believe that nothing call. happens by accident and that you found us today. Let me recommend two things to you. One is tune in to us on Friday, January 30. Friday, January 30, and we have with us psychic Peter Marks. Uh, he is our psychic. We, he has a show every month, and this month it's on the 30th. And we're doing a show called Ask the Psychic and Ask the Coach. So we are going to be taking callers uh, where you can, you know, ask your question. That's uh, Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And the other thing I want to recommend is uh, to become a follower of our show, as I mentioned before, because we have so many spiritual shows, so many, uh, so many that will help you in so many ways. Just simply go to Joyce Barry, B-A-R-R-I-E, and friends.com and become a follower and you'll know what we're doing every day. So thanks for finding us. And um, I, I really recommend that show on Friday. He's, an, he's a psychic and a medium, by the way. So he okay. gets the messages from those who pass. So you found us. So keep finding us and we'll do what we can to make a difference in your life. Okay, back to you, Dr. Dawn. Well, I'd like to thank Lenny's for reaching out and calling. And uh, my first thought was perhaps the, the first one you had in which you expressed, which is there are no accidents. And and she got through, so that's great. Um, Lenise, um, regarding your situation as it pertains to the soul, um, there's, of course, uh, a, a strong soul connection between you and the one that passed. And um, my sense is that... Um, the soul of your friend needs to move on to the light. And when when a loved one passes and that doesn't happen, it affects us because we, we have these connections, um, these electrical, bioelectric, you know, it's like an etheric, energetic connection with the ones we love especially in our solar plexus. And if you've ever noticed, if, you're, um, if you have a fear that something happened to a loved one, and uh, frequently you'll say, it feels like someone punched me in the stomach, that's those cords being tugged. Um, and um, right now, is, is Lenny still with us on the line or no? Yeah, she is. I turned off her mic because we're winding down here, but she is with us. Did you want me to, you want to say something directly to her? I'll put her mic back on. Okay. Sure. It's, it's yeah. on. It's on. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Lenny. Hi. Um, um, how do you feel about, maybe we can um, connect with the soul of your loved one and um, see if we can get that loved one to, to go into the light. Yes, because he is with me and it's, it's making me sad because I don't know what to do. So, well, yes. um, this is one of the things that, that we can do um, right now. We can help. So if you, if you think about and connect with that loved one, and, and we can all can sort of add our light to this, there's this, this big, strong, powerful light that's our source that is calling calling your loved one, and no matter the reason why he's not connected, we want to just brush away any of the impediments, and we're going to clear the path 
for him to join with the light, and we're going to send our love. And okay. that's what the light, the light feels like the love, and so we're going to send love to your loved one and clear the path. And what's the first name so we can focus with you? His name is Jimmy. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. So, Jimmy, um, we're sending a message to you that the, the path is cleared now. That light is drawing you, and it's it's your right place to go. And you don't have to do anything to be accepted by the light just by being you. The, the light is yours. It's, it's time to unite with the light. I will just give a moment for Jimmy to accept that light. And also there's loved ones in the light that are calling too. So, Lenise, I want you to get in touch with your feelings. I feel like Jimmy has joined the light and that he has loved ones that are all around him, accepting him and loving him. That's beautiful. How how are you feeling, Lenise? I do feel a relief. And I did encourage him to go into light, the light, and I told him that it's okay. Move yeah, forward. that's great. Because sometimes our loved ones don't want to leave us, um, and sometimes they're afraid to go to light, or there's a lot of other reasons. But um, it, it's very powerful when we give them permission to move on that we really would love to see them in the light. And sometimes that's all they need to just say, okay, I feel like I can leave now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, does it feel to you like he's in the light? I do. I know this is no coincidence. This is must be what he needed. And maybe yeah. I was the connector to helping him to get there. Absolutely. I guess. Um, yeah. And People do connect with ones that can help them, and then these these crazy, in quotes, coincidences happen so that the, these type of soul healings can happen. And I'm, I'm delighted that you called, and I don't think it's an accident. And I'm, I'm feeling that Jimmy's in the light. And I feel like he has a circle of friends and relatives that are surrounding him now and his spirit is uplifted and his soul is where it finally needs to be. Well, I'm glad because, I, you know, I was thinking this morning, I said, and you said it as well, he must be a strong soulmate because I've been hearing his voice over and over again. Yes. And he must not have arrived, but he told me that he was okay of course, he always said that even in his sickness, he said he was fine, and he he suffered, and I, you know, and I keep thinking about all of that, and then, you know, I think, well, it's over now, but it's just really oh. had me going. Yes, and he finally has peace now, because once we join back into the light, it brings us peace to our soul, and it, and the people that are connected that are survivors on Earth also feel it in their lives change. Um, We had an example, I had an example of that many years ago. Um, A client of mine called at 1030 at night, which was not a problem for me, but um, her sister's husband had just died. And she was having um, experiences like what you were experiencing. I mean, this was, you know, her husband and it was grief and he died very young and in helping her I I tuned into him and he didn't even really know he was dead because he was so young his kids were in high school and just starting college and his spirit hadn't moved on to the light because he didn't know 
like he was still the dedicated father there for his family, and he couldn't he couldn't understand where he was at. He was actually sitting in the doctor's office about to receive a clean bill of health report from his doctor. His doctor turned to give it to him, and he was there sitting dead in the chair. And um, as it turns out, we reunited him with the light, and at that point, his family told me a gust of wind went through the house, and even though there was no wind outside, the wind chime rang, and the dog started barking. And his um, widow felt this great sense of relief and ease and acceptance that came over her. Um, So I'm thinking your report sounds similar as far as uh, a sense of relief and lightening. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I hope it stays. And um, I want that to be it because I have been back and forth with the emotional crying, and and I just want this to be it today. I guess I may um, tear Denise, up again I want you that. to think of something. I want you to think of there's no accidents. You've never called into our show before. You found us today at exactly the show you needed to hear with the person you needed to hear from. So that is indeed a miracle that you created. So let that serve as a sign to you uh, that you're in a state of healing. So thank you for being uh, open and sharing that with us and letting us serve you. And do become a follower so you don't have to miss any of our shows. And you can even call in to speak to our psychic on Friday, who's a medium as well. Thank you, Lenise. Anything else you want to say? Well, I don't think welcome. it's a coincidence either. I think I may have something to do with helping to people to cross over because I did it with my father and then after that, I moved into a house where a spirit was there, and I could hear everything that was going on, and I moved out immediately, and someone told me that I was supposed to cross that spirit over, but I, I really didn't know how. I moved into the house temporarily, but I found out about the spirits. I ran out of there, and I know that's no coincidence either, so I'll keep listening to the show and call in to speak with the psychic on Friday. And maybe I can Terrific, you know, find Denise. out more. And welcome, mm-hmm. welcome to our show. We're we're you know going to be closing out the show in just a couple of minutes. So before we do that, Dawn, thank you for really taking care of our new listener, Lenise. Uh, before we sign off, I'd just like you to talk a bit about life success patterns and choices. I'd like you to finish up the topic with that because that's really something people need to get. They have choices. Voices and uh-huh. about their patterns, what they need to know. So can you please just share a bit about that? Sure. Um, I can give an example of a, a client that's been most recent. These things we don't even think about, so I just want you all to start thinking about. So what are these patterns from perhaps traumas or bad memories that we have that we um, that got us to adopt some kind of a story about it, that we weren't good enough in some way or another. And from that place, we make choices. Um, The soul surgery is all about reprogramming the subconscious for these patterns that don't work anymore to, um, to get those nullified, and then we reprogram to what we want. Um, For instance, um, I met this young lady in, in high school um, in May, she came to a class assured, which is to help students overcome test anxiety and poor grades. And she was having trouble with math. That's why she came. And I've worked um, a couple of times with her. And she came a couple weeks ago and reported that um, now this was based on stuff that she just thought she couldn't do math and she was not a good student. And there were reasons for this based on these stories that had been created from episodes in her life. So it turns out she reported she had just gotten a 97 in geometry. So I said, this is just an example of a pattern that wasn't working for you anymore that you were able to have the power to change. 
And then I just saw her last week again, and she she reported that she had been awarded Geometry Student of the Month. All this within uh, six months' time or so. I met her last May. And these are the types of things that we are all carrying around with us, these programs that limit our choices, but we don't even know that they're limiting them, as Joyce had said. So um, what we can do about that is to find out, I want you to think about the, the places where there are limitations. And these come up in a lot of different ways, but we can reprogram them. So um, if you have interest in that, you can give a call to me or get on my website and check around there and get a little more information. There are people there speaking about their own personal experiences as to how this has affected their their lives. So the website is mysoulsurgeon.com. Okay, I want to thank you so much for being our guest today, our very special guest. Uh, what would you like to say in closing? Oh, I would like to say um, a gift to everybody. Let, let's all just get very peaceful right now, and uh, let's just elevate our soul. Let's celebrate today as a day we're going to treat our soul to some wonderful, yummy snacks. And the first snack we had was our breakfast here, which is with Joyce Berry and friends. Our soul was uh, getting some good food here, and we're going to continue throughout the day. Uh, We're going to automatically choices to feed our soul in a positive, uplifting, motivational way. And we're going to do that as a permanent default in our schedules. Thank you very much. I want to uh, close the show with my special prayer to all of you. Make this the last day, the very last day of your struggles, your suffering, your ill health, your misfortunes, your problems, your pain, your worries, your troubles, your trials and tribulations. May this be the first day, the first day of extraordinary wishes granted and dreams coming true. Make it the most meaningful year of making more money, good health, good luck, good fortune, attracting special people and opportunities, creating magical memories, and manifesting marvelous miracles. Folks, thank you for listening today. Listen every day. We really want to do our part in making the world a better place, one person and one positive action at a time. Thank you.